One of the challenges that I often see is not understanding the difference between passive, aggressive, and assertive. And there is a big, big difference. And understanding this difference can make you a better leader, a more inspiring leader. Let me share by illustration. So if you draw this line in the middle, you have passive on the left, aggressive on the right, and assertive at the top. Now, I sometimes avoid the word assertive. Certain languages in the world, there isn't a difference between assertive and aggressive. So I actually like to use the word authentic, authentic speaking, authentic actions. Now let's go walk through each one of these. Let's use this little legend down here in the bottom corner. If M equals my rights and needs, and Y equals your rights and needs, let's take a look at how this works together. If I am being passive, my rights are less important than yours. I am subordinating my rights to yours. If I'm being aggressive, it's just the opposite. My rights are more important than yours, and so therefore I am asserting myself over you. Your rights are not being met. Now assertive, this is where the beauty works, because you see with passive and aggressive, what happens? It's you versus me, you versus me. When it comes to assertive, this is so beautiful, or authentic language or communication or actions, my rights equals your rights. They are equal. That's absolutely foundational. And that's when you take it up out of you and me and you move it up into a space of higher level leadership. We're in this together. What's the right thing to do for the organization as a whole? What's, going to, what's a solution that's gonna help you and me both? Let me share a fun real case example. A coaching client came to work with me and he was from one of those very large, large hotel chains. Think Marriott or Hilton, those kind of really large hotel chains. He was trying to work on his assertiveness, and so we were talking about the difference between passive, aggressive, and assertive, and he shared this scenario. I want your help to see what you think. He said, so here's a situation. There's a man who owns a hotel, and he's been coming to me for about six months straight now, asking to sell his hotel to our chain. And here's the truth, Brenda, he said, it's just not a good fit. I feel so badly for him because he's so passionate about it. And so I just keep telling him, you know what, call me back, call me back, I'll check into it. And I said, how long has it been? He said, six months. I said, okay, let's pause. Let me ask you, I'm curious, you think about this. Was my client being passive, aggressive, or assertive? Pause and reflect. How many of you said passive? Actually, he wasn't. I'll tell you why. Whose rights were being met? That's the key. Whose rights were being met? Was it his rights that were being met? Yes. Was it the hotel owner's rights that were being met? No. The hotel owner was not having his rights met. So my client, even though he thought he was being passive by not doing anything, was actually being aggressive. When he realized this, he was horrified, absolutely horrified, and he said he wanted to change it right away. So we talked about strategies. He went back to his office, picked up the phone and called the man who owns the small hotel. And he said, look, I want to be honest with you. I don't think it's a good fit. Your hotel is not a good fit for our chain, but I do have connections in the industry and I'd be happy to connect you with them. That was authentic conversation. It was about what was right for both individuals. His rights and the hotel owner's rights were both being met. That's authentic assertive communication in action. Try it. See what you think.